Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Glustic channel. By popular demand, the Arakokra, a player character race of bird people most recently detailed in 2015 within the pages of the Elemental Evil Player's Companion Supplement. It may surprise you that they have been a player character race since August 1987, when they were presented in Dragon Magazine 124 in the article The Wings of Eagles by J.E. Keeping. But the first appearance of the Arakokra was in the pages of the Fiend Folio in 1981, and they're found in the adventure module The Forgotten Temple of Tharos Dune, brought out one year later, where we find the adventurers encounter a plateau home of a small tribe of Arakokra who offer to pay friendly adventurers and gemstones if they can rid the valley they reside in of their hated foes, the Griffins. In this small chunk of text, we learn a few things about them. First, that they pay in gemstones, not coins. Second, they don't exist in large numbers and they face significant threats to their existence. Third, they usually respond to intruders in their territory by flying so high in the air they're almost out of sight from the ground. And finally, they have a shaman who can cast healing magic specific to their own kind, but it's implied that this is just a typical ability of a low-level shaman, and they are capable of summoning air elementals. They exist in the world of Kryn for the Dragonlance setting, they exist in the Greyhawk setting, they certainly exist in the world of Athos for the Dark Sun setting, and of course in the world of Toril for the Forgotten Realm setting, but where do they come from? What is their history? Their origin story? What sort of ecology and culture do they have? So stay a while and listen. We're going to get deeply nerdy. The Airy were the avian creators of the, uh, the, the avian creator race of Faerun. They were a humanoid race, race with both avian and draconic features, including both feathers and scales, who prospered during the days of thunder over 32,000 years ago, back when the landmass of Toril was a supercontinent called Mororo Boros. They originally inhabited the Aeri enclaves in a massive island on the Silver Sea. Ancient ruins and artifacts of this time are vanishingly rare. Most of them come from the far north of Anna, um, Ankorome, the cooler lands, uh, basically north of, northern lands over Mastica, far across the trackless sea. The Aeri have a long history and an empire spread across the land and the sky, but they also had great conflicts with supernatural powers, such as the uh, Lamazu, which led directly to the Aeri breeding the very first Wivens, and later they fought Yenogu's rampaging gnolls and forces of Marash from the uh, elemental plane of air, and their population was decimated. They fell into the worship of the Oberant demon lord Pazuzu in their desperation, and over the course of the years, and none are exactly sure where, how, or why, they created the Arakokra, the Dire Corbys, and the race that would one day become the Kenku. But around minus three, uh, 30,000 DR, dragons all over Faerun gathered the first flight of dragons to assault the Aeri by the land uh, and by the sky and underground. The Aeri empires fell, and those who survived fled the world taking to the endless sky of the elemental plane of air, and from there, the Great Despora to all sorts of different lands. The Kenko and Diacorbis remained behind in the world, as did uh, some of the uh, of the Arakokra, but many thousands of years later, the Arakokra returned to the prime material plane and spread across the many worlds in the Great Despora. They are incredibly widespread. Uh, despite only having a small population in Faerun, uh, they are one of the major races of the planet Collier, which is the second planet from the sun in the realm space, a gas giant enveloped by a 100-mile thick layer of clouds. And below this cloud cover, the entirety of the planet is transparent air and occasional clouds dotted with countless warm, bountiful floating islands that orbit the planet's center of gravity in vastly different altitudes. The Arakokra population has a matriarchal democratic government with seven-year terms of office. The days of Collier are 30, years, uh, 30 hours long, but the year lasts only eight months. And there's two other major intelligent species within the planet, which are lizard folks uh, and dragons. And in the crystal sphere of grey space, home to Earth, where the um, Arakokra, there are a, um, Arakokra living on Edel, another massive air body on Earth that can be found in uh, Rakers. Uh, sorry, another uh, massive air body. And on Earth, they can be found in Rakers, Korask, Griff, uh, Lort Mill, and the Yattle Mountains. There is an Arakokra settlement in the region called Precipice on the second layer of Elysium, and in Dragonlance, living amongst the mountains of uh, Kryn, 
The Arakoka are rivals of the uh, Kairi and often fight over living space, especially um, those tribes on the island of Carthay, where Arakoka have been known to work with barbar- barbaric minimal- minotaur tribes to hunt the Kairi. On the planet of Toril, they are thought to be an immigrant race to Faerun from the continent of Mazdika across the trackless sea. And Arakokras almost all worship uh, Airdri Fania, who appears to them as a giant white bird. Many tribes have sacri- uh, a sacred feather, a white feather that is a gift from their god, and it's their most priceless treasure. They really have tribes more than 11 to 30 members, and they live in communal nests uh, made of woven vines with a soft lining of dried grass. The eldest male usually serves as the tribe's leader, plus in tribes of more than 20 members, the second oldest male generally serves as the shaman, uh, leading simple religious ceremonies involving the whistling of melodic hymns at sunset on the first day of the new month. Many uh, males spend most of their time, their waking hours, hunting for food over the vast uh, hunting area, which can be 10,000 square miles of hunting territory. And they mark this territory with brightly coloured pennants banners and flags. The Arakoka have little to do with other species. Um, They're just pretty isolationist, including neighbouring Arakoka tribes, and they leave their home territory very rarely, so they don't normally encounter humans except for the occasional foray into the rural community to snatch a stray farm animal. This is not an intentionally malicious act. They don't see it as theft, and Arakoka are unable to distinguish between domestic and wild animals, really. They don't keep livestock or pets. They don't have any possessions they can't wear or carry. And anything that's larger than portable is usually used by the whole flock. So they don't understand it when farmers get irate because the Arakoka just swooped out of the sky and killed one of their lambs. As far as an Arakoka is concerned, the lamb was fair game. Arakoka love gems and beautiful glittery or shiny objects. So if a humanoid does venture into their territory, they can trade with or bargain with Uh, For the services of the Arakokra tribe, who make superb scouts, the females spend months of the year incubating their leg, uh, eight months of the year incubating their eggs, passing the time by fabricating javelins and other tools from wood and stone. While resting on their backs, they have their hands and feet in the air. Both are very dexterous, and they use all of their limbs and beak to weave the boundary pennants, uh, sheaths for javelins and other useful objects from vines and feathers. So, yeah, they're crafting most of the time. In Faerun, this rare people have four established colonies, in the Star Mounts in the High Forest, in the Stormhorns of Cormier, in the Cloven uh, Mountains on Vilhon Reach, in the Mist Cliffs of Chult. Um, however, the Star Mounts colony has been almost wholly destroyed by an ancient male green dragon called Ella Acriminal Ekros. And this is actually an adventure you can buy for you, uh, a couple of dollars on the Dems Guild by um, J. Hulk Games. It's called The Lair of uh, Ella Acriminal Acros. And uh, where a party of fifth level adventurers can act as scouts for the nest of retribution who seek to take out their ancient foe once and for all. However, this adventure has some of the deadliest traps in the known world. So be warned. No kickbacks for me. I just thought I'd mention it as as it's directly um, related to the subject we're talking about. I stumbled across it as I was researching. As of 1491 DR, the last settlement of Arakoka in the high forest um, was last airy on the slopes of the southernmost star mounts near the headquarters um, headwaters of the Unicorn Run. On Toril, the Arakoka stand about five feet tall. They have long arms and legs which um, have feathers down to about elbow and knee area. They have the hard-scaled skin of a bird. They rarely um, are hum- they they are really humanoid birds. Their bones are lightweight. They have wings that, when fully extended, stretch across a twenty-foot span, uh, which enables them to catch thermals, glide, and spend all day in the air. They have huge wings. Their wings are not well suited to rapid flapping, um, but they can make a dash action while flying, and they benefit from the boost to their speed. Um, any boost to their speed that doesn't specifically say that it's related to walking or running um, works. So an Arakokra taking a mobile feat will increase all of its speeds, including flying speed by 10 feet. And if the haste car spell is cast on them, their flying speed becomes 140 feet per round. So that's pretty good. Flight is their primary racial ability, along with superior vision in the light of day, able to see roughly 10 times as far as a human on a nice clear day. They also have better hearing, comparable to an elf's, which is an adaptation of the, um, they have, because they fly up at 
um, in the thin out high air at high altitudes. And don't forget, in the worlds of Dungeons and Dragons, you can actually fly into space. However, you will die of suffocation just like anyone else if you do so without any preparation. Their faces combine the features of both parrots and eagles. They have grey black beaks and black eyes. Uh, plumage colour varies, but males generally have red, orange, and yellow coloration, particularly a red crest of feathers on their head, while females tend towards brown and greys. They recognise each other by their plumage, coloration, and patterns, not by their beak or eyes. So when they first meet humans, they, um, or humanoids, they can be easily confused by a person changing into clothing in an entirely different um, outfit. So it, it seems to them that a new person just showed up out of nowhere, speaking in a new voice, or, uh, but in the voice of the person they just they just met, so someone they know. They don't tilt their heads um, and look at things sideways like, like some people mimic them when they're doing that with birds. Their eyes are facing forward like a bird of prey. So they have quite an intense gaze if they're focusing on someone. They can learn any language. They have their own, which has a lot of wobbles, squawks, and whistles. But they have a habit of accentuating their speech with the aracocra sounds that signify emotion and intent. Since their faces are naturally less expressive, they can't smile, so they make a smiling or frowning noise instead. And people who ignore these sounds or don't understand what they mean can run into communication problems um, with the bird people. Aracocra, living in the north, north, mainly worship Serenity, a female Aracocra with silver skin and pink gold feathers. <clears throat> this goddess. They also worship the elven goddess Akadi, uh, remnants of the giant eagles, and Stronmouths of the giants. Aracocra are very independent. They love freedom. They hate confinement with an intensity that borders on hysterical phobia. They hate being anywhere away from the sky, and the idea of trekking through a cave or underground ruin, being stuck in the bowels of a bustling, muddy, congested city, is something they simply don't like. They never will. They will go underground if they have to, but they never, ever are, are comfortable with the idea. Their culture and traditions are very rich, and they love the home nest, their flock. To be away from it for an extended length of time, or to be someone who does so on purpose, is actually seen as a sickness in their eyes. With such small community flocks, when one of them leaves, it's sorely felt by the whole tribe, the whole flock. Because they potentially come from a wide array of backgrounds, Aracocra can be very different from each other. Also, they tend to be very self-reliant and good with their hands, as well as superbly skilled at hurling a javelin. They love to take to the sky, and in the elemental plane, they can fly for days. And in their worship of um, Eredri uh, Fania, the Dance of Swirling Winds is one of their ceremonies, held semi-annually on the vernal and autumnal equinoxes, and it celebrates the changing of the seasons in honour of Eodri. The winds always blow on strong on such days, and when followers are gathered, the celebrants offer beautiful feathers and perform an aerial ballet dance to the music of wind instruments played by others. It's quite beautiful. Um, at these and some other times, they also pray to uh, Krokar, their father god is rarely seen outside of their flocks, who they sacrifice gems to along with the eggs of the evil creatures, interestingly enough, in their secret ceremonies. The overall alignment of their entire population, on average, is neutral good, but individuals, of course, can be of any alignment. They tend to be very good with ranged weapons and have some quirky habits, so such as not knowing why everyone doesn't sleep together in one common rest area. They don't like to sleep, um, sleep inside rooms. They like to sleep on the roof of a building um, rather than inside it. They have their own magic traditions, such as the summoning of air elementals, um, which one of their shamans can do with the help of four other Aracocra and a lot of chanting. It's a relatively simple process for them. And that about does it for the remarkable Aracocra on Faerun, quite a um, popular character class, which is not only legit, it actually makes them older than Dragonborn as a player character option. They, they enjoy peace and solitude, is something I should say. Most of them have little interest in dealing with other peoples and less interest in spending time on the ground. For this reason, it takes an exceptional circumstance for the Aarakocra to leave his or her tribe and undertake the adventurer's life. Neither treasure nor glory is really enough to lure them from their tribes. A dire threat to their people, a mission of vengeance, a catastrophe, typically lies at the heart of an Aarakocra adventure's chosen path. Um, two other circumstances might call an Aarakocra to adventure. First, the Aarakocra have historical ties to the Windukes of Aqua. They, they spent thousands and thousands of years in the elemental plane of air. Um, in many ways, they are native to it, kind of. They're native outsiders. 
Um, exceptional individuals honour that connection and might seek out the missing pieces of the rod of seven parts, the remnants of an artifact sh- um, fashioned by the Wind Dukes long ago to defeat the Queen of Chaos's monstrous con- uh, champion, Mishka the Wolf Spider. So that's um, a folklore that the Arakokra pass on to each other in their, in their oral tradition um, uh, of, of storytelling. So they know a lot about the ancient times. When plunged into Mishka's body, the, uh, the chaos in his blood sundered the rod and scattered the pieces across the multiverse, as we know. Recovering the pieces means gaining honour and esteem in the eyes of the Vati, who forged it and could possibly restore a powerful weapon for defence against the, um, uh, the agents of elemental evil. So, yeah, it's one thing that um, Arakoko, a young Arakoko, may dream of. Second, Arakoko are sworn foes of elemental earth, and particularly gargoyles that serve Ogremok the Prince of Earth, and the Arakoka word for gargoyle is loosely translated as flying rock. And battles between Arakoka and gargoyles have raged across the elemental planes of Earth and air, occasionally spilling into the world on the material plane. Arakoka on that plane might leave their colonies to lend aid to other humanoids committed to fighting Earth cults and thwarting their efforts. And of course, they hate griffins. <laughs> they, will, they will go out of their way to kill griffins. As um, with much of their speech, Arakoko names include uh, clicks, trills, whistles, uh, to the point that other people have a difficult time pronouncing them. Typically, a name has two or four syllables with the sounds acting as connectors. When interacting with other races, Arakoko may use nicknames gained from people they've met or shortened form of their names as they, um, understand, they start to understand the complexities and simplicities of other humanoid language. An Arakoko of either gender may have one of these short names, uh, Era, Ail, or Dekek, Eric, Hek, Hicky, Pleek, or Usk, Hwaf, Hweb, Salek, Urk, or Zed. <laughs> Lovely. Just a reminder, if you're not subscribed already, feel free to do so. And be sure to hit that notification bell as I upload from the other side of the world sometime in your future. For access to all the scripts and one week advanced access to these videos, consider becoming a patron of the channel on Patreon for a minimum of just $1 a month. Join the community on our Discord server, come say hi. Also, if you want to pick up a new video game at a significant daily discount and help me out in the process, check out the daily deal on Chrono, link below in the video description text. Also, I now have um, a little bit of merch available. If you want to buy anything with the channel logo on it, uh, feel free. Um, Much appreciated. Always, thanks for listening, and I'll be back with more for you again very soon.